Join the ranks of these greats. Become a member of the IGFA today. For more information, visit IGFA.org. As an investigative reporter for the Miami Herald during the 1960s, Carl Wickstrom took on crime and corruption. As a legislative aide in Tallahassee, he helped draft law enforcement reform legislation. That same crusader mentality and zeal served him well when he decided to challenge the status quo to improve the lot of fishermen in the state of Florida. While Carl studied journalism at the University of Florida, he spent summers working at his father's newspaper, learning the business and refining his writing. In 1967, when the Florida Senate session ended, he moved to Miami with the idea of combining his love of fishing and writing by publishing magazines. National Airlines in-flight magazine Aloft was the first product of Wickstrom Publishers. In 1969, Florida and Tropic Sportsman appeared. Quickly, the magazine's name was shortened to Florida Sportsman, and just as quickly, it became a success. Partly because of the state's growing population, partly because Carl insisted on good writing and had people like Vic Dunaway on board at the outset, and partly because he brought his newspaper journalistic ethics to the magazine. Wickstrom provided more than entertainment. His editorials became powerful vehicles for targeting those exerting improper influence on marine laws and regulations. And his concerns about the worsening condition of the state's fisheries struck a chord with his readers. Carl Wickstrom may be best known for his initiation of Florida's constitutional net ban amendment of 1995. He first suggested a ban on destructive gill nets in a 1991 issue of Florida Sportsman and included a coupon readers could return if they agreed. He was overwhelmed and heartened by the response, and the Save Our Sea Life campaign was born. 429,428 validated signatures were required to get the amendment on the ballot. 520,000 were collected. It's just super important that the general public get behind this. <clears throat> the sport fishing interests are just one aspect of the general public. The key is to get everyone behind this and get it passed. They need to sign petitions. Uh, registered voters need to uh, get other registered voters to sign petitions. And they need to donate funds. This thing really needs funds to match the commercial war chest. You know, they have, they have great profits that they can put into this battle, and we don't. It's, uh, we, we just need grassroots help from everybody. In November 1994, 72% of the state's voters approved the amendment, and on July 1st, the net ban took effect. Though there have been numerous attempts to overturn it, Florida Constitution Article 10, Section 16, 1 has been upheld, and it has revitalized inshore fishing for millions of residents and visitors. Carl spearheaded other important changes in regulations and policies including the Polluter Pays Law for the Everglades and the 1999 merger of saltwater and freshwater fishing and hunting into one state agency. In 1985, he was instrumental in the startup of CCA Florida, and in 1995, he was designated the American Sport Fishing Association's Man of the Year. Carl remains editor-in-chief, and Florida sportsmen remain synonymous with quality journalism, education, entertainment, and conservation. He may now spend more time on his boat and giving thought to inscribing the number 429,428 on his tombstone in the very distant future. But he hasn't stopped caring about and fighting for recreational fishermen, something he's done for more than 40 years. For that, the IGFA salutes Carl Wickstrom. Join the ranks of